Okay, good afternoon, guys. My name is Steve Ruffley. Welcome to another live trading clinic. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Bank of England interest rates. So before I start, I'm going to go through a quick presentation, just so we've got all the risk warnings out of the way and what we're going to go through today. And uh, then we'll talk about the Bank of England, the rate decision, what to expect, um, all about Mark Carney, etc., etc. Open forum, guys. Any question you've got, just type them through in the chat or Q&A window we can get to. We see a good opportunity today. We will trade the bigger and make some money. So start, before I start, as always, I need to read the risk warning that spread betting, CFD trading, both carry high level risk, growth capital, resulting losses that exceed the risk deposit. Let me for everyone, so please ensure you fully understand the risks involved. The information and core is valid herein, and no circumstances are considered an offer or solicitation to invest. Nothing herein should be construed investment or tax advice. The information provided, believe, please are accurate the data is produced. Okay, again, education only, the content of the webinar, as opposed to opinion of the moderator, nointrade.com. The content does not constitute financial, investment, or tax advice. Intro to conference, not accepting liability for content of the Okay, so what we're we going to cover? Well, we're going to do live charting analysis of the data that's going to come out. So, again, it's all about multiple time frame trading. This is how I know to trade. This is how I've taught hundreds, you know, maybe thousands of people to trade. We'll talk through the fundamental analysis because that's what we're dealing with right now. Fundamental news that will drive the market. You know, what, what's the tone of, uh, of the NPC? What's the tone of Mark Hahn? What's going to be said? It's all about forward, um, uh, uh, forward guidance, sorry. Uh, and that's what we're trying to focus on. You know, we're not going to come out and say anything directly in the markets. So we have to be a bit of a detective here and figure out what exactly um, is said and what it means. Then again, if we see a, a good opportunity, as I said, I'll, I'll do a live money trade. I'm going to be focused on the FTSE and the uh, and the penny of the dollars of cable today. Um, these are things that are going to be affected by you know UK uh, rate announcements. So that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, we've seen a bit of a spike in the, uh, the penny against the US dollar back on the PMI data. So again, all these different things are affecting the market before we've actually got the data. So we can see the market spiked up high. We've come back to this key level that I can see at 1.51825 in, uh, in the penny against the dollar in cable. So FTSE has really kind of, you know, opened up positively today, but it's kind of dropping off slightly, kind of mid-ranging. If you'd read my um, my Twitter feed or, or on, on my um, on my Facebook page, I've been quoted. Uh, I don't know quite recently in, in Huffington Post, uh, Reuters, and Bloomberg. And I had an article dedicated to Wednesday on Bloomberg to my uh, technical views of the Stockton and, uh, and the FTSE. And I pretty much called the top of the FTSE at six six oh six to to the pit the other day. So all these things you need to be looking out for and understanding what other traders and people like myself are talking about. So, the Bank of England rates today. I don't think we're going to see any major surprises, to be honest. The Bank of England is expected to keep rates historically low on 0.5. And uh, it's all about this forward guidance. So, it's quite interesting because when you're involved in these kind of things and you talk about them every day, you just assume that everybody understands what forward guidance is and, and what it, it means to the market. Does everybody understand what forward guidance is and why it's kind of so important that we're talking about it today? Okay. Well, if you don't, guys, I mean, basically, I, I just went out and, and I found the most basic kind of concise way of, uh, of understanding what it is. And it's just making a promise about the future, okay, in particular about interest rates. And it's all about the Bank of England and other central banks um, that can directly control the short-term interest rate, which obviously, okay, which affects, you know, the high street borrowing and the overnight rate. So basically, it's just a commitment to what they're going to do uh, in the for yeah, in, in the future. But I think the whole point is that we know interest rates have been historically low, but nobody can be naive enough to, to say that we can keep interest rates low forever. The Fed have committed to low interest rates until, until 2015. The ECB, I don't, know, I don't think really think they know what they're doing, to be honest, with all due respect. Um, they're only kind of real. They were last again to the party to cut rates last time, and it looks like they'll be the first again to cut them again. Um, all these this talk about dragging negative deposit rates is just nonsense. It just isn't going to help the, uh, the European economy at all. So the main focus is on when the Fed are going to move on interest rates, when the Bank of England are. So in my opinion, and again, it's just my opinion, I don't, I don't know, I think the UK will be the first of the, uh, of the G8, certainly, to move on interest rates. Because, you know, again, as a small-ish population, you know, comparatively to the global economy, we're used to good times, we're used to bad times. The whole point about the UK economy is we're balancing you know, the stability of our currency with the ability to pay back personal debt. 
And that's what really all lies. You know, there's different quotes, but really 1.4 trillion pounds is the figure of personal debt. So that's outstripping, you know, government debt. So interest rates are massively important to, you know, people's standard of living and all these, you know, things I've been able to pay the the mortgages to to repay the the debt payments. So that's the real focus that that Carney's talking about. When he first came into office, you know, the first thing he said is he wanted, wanted to look at the forward planning, but also revisit the inflation report. You know, inflation has been way above target in the Eurozone, and in the UK and in the US, but for quite some time now. And it's, it's not healthy to keep interest rates artificially low just to try and stimulate the economy. OK, so we'll have to see what Carney's tone is today. But I think it will all focus around how quickly. I want to say quickly. You know, we're talking about quarters. We're talking about six months, 12 months, you know, of, of how we're going to actually, you know, really help the policy, you know, help the country get that, you know, this, this stability, this growth that we, that we leave is out there. And I just don't know about the growth, unfortunately, right now. I mean, it, figures boil down into two basic types. You have growth figures and you have inflation figures. All we've been focusing on for the last two, three years is growth figures. So GDP, consumer sentiment, jobs, all these kind of things, you know, trying to find out where this growth is coming from. And it just isn't there. And it hasn't been there for three years. So we're going to get to the point where we cannot simply keep interest rates low any for any longer. And we're going to have to replace the tone and, and what we look at, you know, for what the decision the market is going to take away from the growth figures and bring them back to inflation. So that's going to focus all about what we're talking about today, the Bank of England uh, rate decision and uh, the CPI and PPI data. So all these things are the best measure of inflation that the, the governments and the policymakers have. So today, I don't really expect any surprises, but as we saw from the last rate decision that we traded, you know, the, the tone that was set, you know, there's a, quite a big move in the market and we made some money. So the whole thing about the Bank of England and the uh, and the Fed rates and all these kind of things is that they have the potential to move the market. So if they have the potential and people are waiting for these figures, then they are an opportunity to trade. So you have to be aware of them and you have to be ready to trade any eventuality. So I will be covering from next month, I think, the, the Fed decision as well. Trading live data is something I've done for a long time. You know, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I find it very, not easy, because I mean, that, that's, that's, we can never say trading's easy. I like having a, my own opinions, you know, pit against the market based upon data. I find it much more responsive than technical data. So I'm much more at home trading than on-farm payrolls, trading any kind of key data. The Bank of England rates and the Fed rates are nothing different. Okay, but you have to be more of a detective. You know, Mario Draghi is not going to come out, Ben Bernanke is not going to come out and say, we're going to change rates this time next month. We're just going to cut them. OK, or we're going to increase them. They're just not going to say things like that. So the master of all these things was John claude Trichet, all about price stability and the ECB maintaining inflation. So that's where I cut my teeth years and years and years of listening to that man. But I've come to respect him. You know, at the time I hated him, but I've come to respect him because I just don't feel like people like Mario Draghi have the credibility. You know, I'm really, you know, pinning high hopes on Mark Carney and I hope that he can really you know, shake up the Bank of England and, and just go forward aggressively and, and, and positively and you understand that, yes, we're in tough times and, you know, that it's going to be a long road for recovery still. But, you know, we're not, we're not finished. We're not ended. You know, this doom and gloom, double dip recession, you know, never really happened. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking for whoever takes over Ben Bernanke to also, again, you know, carry on the, um, you know, the, the quantitative in uh, Easy until infinity, you know, there these strong messages. And even if they do taper quantitative easing, to do it in the right way. Because the US still sets the tone for the global economy. So we need them. You know, we need them to carry on being aggressive. And, you know, forget what's happening in China and Japan. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's all about the stability of the US for me. So we've got some key levels if we look at the charts now in the uh, in cable. Um, really, we can see the market extend to 152327 and up to 152672. These are the major kind of resistance points. Again, we can see the hourly Bollinger Bands may come into play. The market rejects um, there's any kind of, you know, kind of, I mean, again, you have to figure out what's being said today. You know, it's not just the interest rate is going to stay on hold. It's if the, if the market is going to take them dovish or hawkish. So any kind of positive news 
could see a bit of a bid come into the pound against the dollar. So remember, when we're trading currency pairs, the first um, pairing is seen to be the strongest currency. So the pound, if we see dovish news come into this, should strengthen against the dollar and hit 1523, um, 1526. And you never know, it could get as high as 1529, 15344. Uh, four. Again, if it takes it as hawkish news, then we've got big levels down here at 151. Uh, we could definitely see the market extend down here. So we're in a bit of a downward tr uh, channel. But we're towards the, the top end on the hourly chart. Just got the 15 minute charts up for a bit more, a bit more zooming in, a bit more kind of instant volatility. And I always find it helps looking at two different time frames of the same product. Just got the hourly of the FTSE. Okay. We can change that down. We can change that to a, to a 15 minute as well, just to see what the FTSE might do. And again, you have to understand if the Bank of England got a hint that rates might, might go up, that's very, very negative. That, that, that. That's, that's hawkish for the FTSE. So the FTSE will go down. Okay, so they're not always directly correlated in, uh, in what information's coming out and what's being said. Okay, guys, well, any, any questions, any thoughts, anything you'd like to ask about the Bank of England? Any, any thoughts yourself? Do you think the BOE will be the first to move on rates? Do you think, you think the ECB will? Right, yes, there's definitely audio. Daniel, can everybody else hear? Okay. I take it everyone else can hear, guys. Just someone give me a, a signal of life. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cheers, Ian. Good to see you again, mate. Okay, yeah, uh, if someone just types into Daniel, has to, has to re, re -log in. Okay, pan on fire. Always like your opinions. Would have to... Would have thought the pound against the dollar bearish given a US a figs. Yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. And again, I'm massively bullish and always have been the US and massively bullish the US against the, the, the euro. So, again, we're talking about short-term decisions, pan on fire. Um, it's not necessarily um, that, you know, the, the US good data, you know, is going to send the pound down right now. You know, we're focusing, all the markets are focusing on the, the pound right now. So it doesn't matter what's going to happen in this afternoon's trading or what happens, you know, later on. It's all about right now. We're going to see short-term volatility in the pound and what's the interest rate and the, and the, the monetary policy commentary going to do to the pound. Um, yeah, obviously, we've got the massive figure, non-farm payroll, like tomorrow. So all eyes will be on that. We're talking about short-term volatility. That's why I've got the hourly and 15-minute candles on. It might be a short-term trade where we make some money, okay? but it might not. You know, the longer-term trend for me is still buy the dollar against every other currency. But again, we're talking about a short term bit of data now, which would affect the market for the next five, 15 minutes, hour, two hours. And that's where we're trying to make short term money. OK, Roy Keane. OK, good to see you've taken a break from uh, from managing. Uh, can you buy the pound now? You think it'll be not dovish from Carney? Absolutely. You can do whatever you want, Roy. You're the trader. I'm not here to give financial advice. If you think that, you know, the market's going to go uh, going to go up, the pound's going to strengthen. Well, your boots. I mean. You're, 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 you're your own man, your own trader. I wait for the data to come out because I don't know these things. I, I commentate and I trade, but I don't know what's going to happen. But great comments, yeah. I mean, uh, Manjo, do you think any insiders have access? No. I mean, you have to stop this kind of this kind of thinking straight away, Manjo, uh, and that applies to everybody in the markets. Only worry about what you can control, otherwise you'll drive yourself mad. But I've been in trading the markets for over a decade. I've been some, the manager of the biggest trading floor in Europe. I've never got a figure out, ever. Okay? So simple as that. If I've not heard of somebody getting it, it's unlikely they are. So only worry about what you can control, and that's the data coming out and what you do with it. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes now before uh, we hear things. Uh, I'm going to have the score come, so hopefully that doesn't interfere too much with uh, you being able to hear me. But um, we're going to listen out for the comments. It's going to be quick fire, guys. I'm going to say things. I'm going to say there's a buy or a sell for the FTSE, buy or a sell for the uh, the pound against the the dollar. These things are, are my opinion. They're not a you know a solicitation for you to buy and sell. Uh, we're going to have to quickly interpret what's being said, quickly interpret where the market can move to. And this is why these setups are so important. Okay, we've got massive ranges in the FTSE. Um, you know the FTSE can go all the way up to six seven oh five, all the way down to six four seven nine. A lot more nice, tight levels of attraction in the pound against the US dollar. So a lot more points where we can go to the upside and the downside. So we're going to have to strap ourselves in, guys. We've only got a minute. I'm going to be talking quickly. I'll try and be as concise as I can and try and tell you best I can how, uh, how the market is going to react to this. But uh, it's going to be a volatile 10 minutes, depending on what's said.
Okay, so it's all about understanding the forward guidance. And this is really a precursor to how we're going to move on interest rates. Okay, so think about that, guys. Okay, so get your screens open. As always, have your trading, uh, trading sizes in. FTSE and, and pound against the dollar, what we're going to be trading, if we see any good opportunities. Okay, guys, so just a minute to go, so get ready. So we're expecting no change in interest rates and no change in the forward guidance. So any changes, any comments that come out that are uh, opposite to this or hawkish or dovish to this can see a move in the markets, guys. Okay, guys, so just listen for the comments coming out. Okay, guys, well, uh, yeah, I think we're actually a little bit premature here. We're still just running through what, uh, what could potentially be said. But... One second, guys. Let me just take this in. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what we're just running through is that we're expecting no change in the uh, in the interest rate. That, that's that's a given. The uh, actual kind of what we're talking about to do with um, the forward guidance is also expected to be fairly neutral, and no real major changes made. We're not going to talk about any kind of intra-bank day rate at the minute. They're not really kind of looking at that either. Hmm, interesting. Uh, other analysts and other kind of major banks and, and speakers are expecting no return to, uh, to kind of the, the, the kind of easing cycle this year. Yeah, so again, just going through the, the, uh, the members of the BOE, it's kind of 9 nil for, um, you know, the majority of decisions that are being made. There's not too many people um, actually kind of going against it. Yeah, cheers, Chris. Yeah, I just realised that, yeah, we're, uh, we're 15 minutes early. Yeah, my mistake. Sorry about that. So, I mean, again, it's all about understanding now what's being said over the wires and what people's opinions are, are, are being built up. So, I mean, that's the whole point I try and make about trading, you know, time and time again. It's not necessarily about having a system or being the only person to know what's going on in the market. You know, for a lot of the time, for me, it's the exact opposite. It's trying to understand what everybody else is basing their decisions on and everyone else is basing their trading decisions on, both technically and fundamentally, and then going with it when the, when the majority of the market is right and then going against it when they're not. So... It just goes to show with it's the same with technicals, it is fundamentals. If everybody here is sat saying that, yeah, okay, well, interest rates are going to stay steady. Mark Carney's new to the job. He's not really going to do anything too aggressive. So really what we're going to see is, is no move or no change in the underlying um, kind of market direction. And remember, I mean, the whole point of why we have markets is that we have futures markets as well. So people will be trading the futures market based upon you know, what these decisions today are going to be. So they've already priced in, in the futures market, what Mark Khan is going to say, interest rates are going to stay at, at 0.5%. So when you're talking about the markets, that's how complex they are. We're not just trading cash markets in the decision right now. The futures markets have already taken into consideration what this data is going to be today. So that's why when we have unexpected comments or unexpected tones, and certainly, which we haven't had in the past, unexpected rate rise, rises and, uh, and cuts. You know, that's why they have such a volatile effect on the market. So for me, I really expect that everyone really right now is, that's where you can see no kind of real direction in the market in the short term. Nobody's taking an aggressive buy or sell position, either the FTSE or the, or, or the pound against the dollar, because we're not really expecting much change but if something does happen people are going to be liquidating positions and they're going to be doing that in the short term or getting into positions based upon a longer term trend change 
So we can see that it's a nice level in the pound against the dollar here at one spot five one eight two five. So the market really is just dipping and testing. So maybe this is going to be our key pivot point. And it's no real um, coincidence that it's just above the 20-period uh, moving average. So, again, it's always good to have technical studies like a moving average, you know, your support and resistance lines uh, on, on your chart because you can see a, a picture building around that. So we see an aggressive break below one spot five one eight two five. Then we know the market will want to get down to the lower ball in Japan at one spot five one two eight eight. Again, if we break up higher, we might break the upper ball in Japan, get to one five two one five two six. That again, these things, you know, you need to have a line in your chart because that's the easiest, that's the only way that I know of trading. And again, it doesn't matter about the rules I talk about that we should look at data and charts in the 80-20 rules. So about 80% technical and 20% fundamental. Okay, the 20% fundamental will still trade technically. If you see a strong directional move, it will still adhere to Fibonacci and it will still look for logical points of support and resistance. Okay? So that's the whole point of having a balance between the different styles of trading, be it uh, technical, be it fundamental. You know, they both really go together. Okay, so a few questions coming through. So uh, Driv is just saying, so ideally, should last uh, time's forward guidance take effect today? Well, yeah, possibly. I mean, as long as nothing really has changed to make uh, Carney and, and the Bank of England approach you know, the forward guidance in any different way. But again, a lot of things can happen in a day. A lot of things can happen in a week. And certainly, a lot of things can happen in a month. So just because they had that opinion last month doesn't mean necessarily it will be the exact opinion they have this month. We're looking for tiny variations in what they say. You know, it's, it's all about being, you know, having the, these words and comments under the microscope. You know, the little tiniest change in what was said this time last month can lead to a short-term effect in the market. And that's all we're looking for, to jump on the back of that short-term volatility and make some quick money in the market. You know, we don't need to know if it's going to affect the overall trend for the next month until next uh, month's meeting. You know, but all these things are an opportunity. We might see a 20-tick straight-line move. And again, if you're trading good size, that's more than enough to make some good money. Okay, so that's what we're looking for right now, them small, tiny variations. Okay, uh, Sharon is asking, which markets do you prefer, New York or GMT daily close? Um, I mean, again, I, I just I generally trade the futures markets because that's just what I've done. You know, I've always traded the futures markets because that's what I understand. You know, the most liquid, most volatile for me. And I like to trade the indices. So, big fan of the S&P. Any live session I do, I generally trade the S&P because, again, I generally trade U.S. data. This is UK data today, so it's much more specific, much more specific to the UK, the GILT, the FTSE 100, FTSE 250, you know, cable. It's all the things that are pound-based, so that's why I'm looking at the, uh, the FTSE futures market, and I'm looking at the pound against the dollar. As simple as that. These are the things that will move um, if we see some you know, variation to these hawkish and dovish comments uh, at the BOE today. So, yeah, that's, that's what I prefer, but, yeah, good question. Okay, so Chris, always good to see you again, Chris. You don't think the rates will increase until after uh, the next UK elections in May 2015. Carney appointment, in my view, uh, political to get governor out of a mess. GS reckons increase until 2016. No increase. Okay, well, Chris, I mean, yeah, absolutely valid opinion for that. I, mean, I think I agree with uh, the first part um, that, yeah, we're probably not going to see an increase in, in, increase in rates until after the election. But, I don't know. Till, till, are they going to keep rates till low till 2016? Nah, I can't see it. I can't see it. It's just not going to happen until 2016. It's too far in the future. Interest rates will be you know, low for nearly six years by then. Not going to happen. It can't happen. Markets won't allow it to happen. Uh, we're in cycles. Interest rates and the markets are bigger than any government, any big, uh, bigger than any government decision. So I cannot... I cannot see that happening, okay? But my view is that of all the, you know, the Bank of England and the Fed, the BOE are nimble and manoeuvrable enough to be the first ones to, to, to change interest rates. And I think, you know, think about it as well. If you're changing interest rates, it's going to hurt the consumers and the people in the UK, but it's going to bring a lot of foreign investment. It's going to be a lot of people buying pounds, okay? So 
for me, you know, I think the long term is remain bullish the US and remain bullish the dollar. But again, keep remember we're a very close ally of the of the US. So keep in mind I think really for me cable and sterling are going to continue to rise. I think the euro is going to continue to drop. People are rejoicing about the 12.1% unemployment rate being stable in Spain uh, and, and, the, and the Eurozone. Um, what's all that about? Well, when's that good news? Okay, Spain and Portugal are in dire straits. You know, I don't see any good news coming out of Europe. And for me, I pick the top in the DAX and the stocks. And once they reach them, they're going to do nothing but sell off for the rest of the year. That's what I believe. So buy everything you can dollar base, sell everything you can euro base. And for the pound, let's see what happens today. Let's see what happens in the short term. But I still think that the interest rates from the Bank of England will be the first to move, and that's going to make the, uh, the, the pound a lot more attractive to foreign investors. That's just my opinion. You know, that's just my opinion. We just, you know, just don't know. Okay, guys, so we, we have really got five minutes now before the uh, interest rate announcements. Remember, pretty much everything across the board unchanged. Look, them slight variations in, uh, in, in the attitude to... Uh, to um, the, the, you know, the, the Bank of England's forward guidance and any kind of clues about uh, anything else that might shape up the short term. So we're just testing the, you know, the, um, the 1 spot 51825 level here. Okay, so that's pretty much, again, and, you know, we could do a Fibonacci. I'm guaranteeing that's pretty much 50% Fibonacci of, of what this up to down move is. Okay, so it's not, not, not quite, but it's not a million miles off. So, Again, in the short term, you know, the market's really kind of, it's gone up. It's come down to, to 50% near this 151. So the market, again, is going to extend on, on dovish comments to, up to 152327, or we're going to break down lower to 151288. Uh, okay, so it's always always handy having the Fibonacci kind of things handy because it just works, guys. Time and time again, you know, that the market looks for it. But for the market to retrace that key 50% and then, you know, continue with its overall direction or retrace the whole move. That's all it's telling us. OK, so we're just bouncing on this kind of key level and just breaking through, which coincides with the moving average. So we're pretty much at parity now. So anything in the next kind of four minutes can kind of happen to the markets. OK, so that's, again, how you build up your views based upon the data. OK, so. Any more final questions or thoughts? Um, thanks to uh, thanks to Roy, you know, and again thanks to Chris. You know, I, I really do appreciate the, reg the regulars like Pan on Fire uh, and Deruva and Manjo. You know, it's really great to see you guys coming and supporting us time and time again. And again, remember, guys, the more opinions we have, the more people that you know tell us what they're thinking, the more we can understand what the market's thinking. So it's in our interest to get you know the attendances these uh, events as high as we can because it's for our own selfish gain. The more we know what other people are thinking the more we can take advantage and trade with it when it's right and against it when it's wrong. Okay? These are the, these are the mottos of my trading. You know, it's not about being the smartest guy out there. It's about understanding the market sentiment when everyone else is thinking and then going with them when they're right and then smashing them when they're wrong because you know they'll be getting out of position. You know they'll be panicking. And that's, what, that's the why I like to, to trade. You know, trading's aggressive. You know, trading is, it is war. Guys. And the person with the big account and, the, you know, the biggest kind of, you know, strength and mind strength to stay in positions is one that's going to succeed. Okay, good question. Am I aware of any successful traders who only solely trade technically? I am, but they're few and far between. They generally have very big accounts and trade only uh, through EAs and they don't ever trade, you know, kind of manually. Um, you cannot be a fully technical 100% trader and fade at every fundamental bit of news. You can't. You just can't do it. I've met loads of people that tell me they can, but I'm the one that's, you know, that, that's rich and does all this kind of stuff and they're not. So why do I, why would I listen to them? So no is a short answer. Okay, guys, a couple of minutes. So remember, key points we're trying to get out of this. We know interest rates are going to stay on hold. If interest rates do change, <laughs> well, we're in, for a, we're in for a turbulent half an hour, but I'm 99% I'm sure they won't. Take particular according to the... Uh, to what we're going to, you know, talk about with this forward guidance and anything changes from last month's uh, statement. And again, guys, lot, lots of information going to be said, so try your best to keep up and listen. Okay, market's taking a little bit of a sell-off, 30 seconds. No, I didn't mention any names. Okay, come on, guys, this is it. 
30 seconds. Unchanged. The call is unchanged. That's what we're looking out for. And then a lot of comments coming through. I'll try and repeat them as best as I can. And then any kind of particular thing that stands out, we can uh, use that for our decision. Okay, guys. 10 seconds. Get ready. Unchanged, unchanged. Okay, no panic. Let's wait for the comments. Market's going bid now, guys. Okay, so... Inflation report's going to be published on Wednesday. Okay, forward guidance and threshold's going to be revisited in that, in that report. So, okay, market's taking that positively, pounds spiking against the dollar just now. QE held steady, no changes, no change in the QE. Okay, guys, so really pretty much everything's in line. The FTSE's not taking this well. The FTSE's going towards the low end of that Bollinger Band. So there might be an opportunity to buy a small bounce on that. Okay. Cable, yeah, I mean, cable's is, is taking a bit. So, okay, the gilt's also increasing. So, again, we have to see, guys, with nothing's really changed, but obviously the pound is strengthening against the dollar in the short term here. But if nothing's really changed, then am I going to buy into that? No, I don't really feel confident to buy enough that. Let's see what happens with this level up here at 152327. For me, I'll probably be selling if we t hit this level. Okay, FTSE's also on the low end of the Bollinger Band. I don't see anything that bad for the FTSE. Okay, I don't see anything bad. Okay, so we're just about to hit this level here in cable. So it might be an opportunity for a, a short sell on that on that level. Okay, we've hit it. We've broken through. So the market can only extend to one five two six seven two. If it doesn't find uh, any. Any, any more momentum there, that could be a sell in the pound against, so we're selling the pound against the dollar, selling the pound against the dollar for the bounce, okay, so short the pound against the dollar, okay, hopefully it's going to come back within that Bollinger Band, I mean again, another good trade could be buying against the FTSE, but I'm just going to stay, okay, we're making a, a touch higher again towards this level, okay, so the market's just dipping down now, okay, Absolutely, nothing's changed. The technical view takes over, Dr. Bisley. You're absolutely right. Okay, so as I said, we've sold because we didn't really kind of make any attempt to aggressively close above our level. So, okay, we've sold. We're 10 ticks on side, not trading massive size. Okay, but it might be a good opportunity now to kind of let the market get back to that 15954 level. Okay, and I expect it, you know, if it does close below that, to certainly test 151825. Okay? So, well in profit now, guys. Well in profit. A nice level to bounce off there. Again, the FTSE couldn't close outside that um, that 15-minute Bollinger Band on the low side. So, let's see if any more kind of parity is going to come back into the market. As we said, nothing's really changed. Okay, nothing's really changed. Everything's as expected. We'll have to see what uh, comes out of the you know the Fed and what comes to non-farm payroll tomorrow. But for right now, nothing's really changed from the Bank of England. So, the market has kind of gone from the lows to the highs. Couldn't really find any momentum to carry on. Not saying it won't carry on from this point, but you know that's short-term trading, guys. Well, we've just made 15 ticks off selling a technical level based upon the fundamentals remaining the same. Okay, so we've got two decisions here, guys. Okay, we can take this as a long-term, longer-term trade, not long-term trade, and that that might be the high of the day now, or we can see. Gonna have to take some profit and see what happens from now. See the FTSE, that was a great buy just outside the Bollinger Band. FTSE's really kind of you know gone from uh, the negative to the positives. So again, the technicals are going to take over now, guys. So the Bollinger Band, as we know, don't like to be closed above on the smaller time frame. Look at that FTSE, what a great buy that was just outside the lower end of the Bollinger Band. That's a really good trade. As I said, a Always hindsight, isn't he? You don't, you don't do the double trade. I wasn't trying to be greedy, but, you know, 16, 17 ticks of, of pure profit. Okay? Excellent, David. David's taken 10, uh, 10 points out of the FTSE. 
Brilliant, that's just what we like to hear. So FTSE now, if that starts to go green, we're going to close above the moving average and get back to these levels up here at 6616, okay? But again, remember to take take profit where you can, guys, because, you know, these short-term trades will only be in the market for, you know, the intraday kind of short-term kind, of, um, kind of moves. So you can turn a short-term trade into a long-term trade. The overall trend was down on the pound against the dollar. So really, this news isn't great. It isn't bad. But it's, it should be the technical. So we should see all profit taking coming out of the market move back down to parity. But again, you just can't tell that. So it's trying again the pound against the dollar to, uh, to get above that line. I don't see the date has changed. So I've sold another lot. OK, so I'm short again. I don't see anything really change. I don't see the market having any real excuse to kind of blip up. Is it going to get as high as 152672, the next point of resistance? Possibly. But I'll probably sell some more up there as well. OK, the footsies rebounded. OK, from the lows to the highs in the short term. OK, so I'm expecting the other pound against the, the dollar to do the same, to, uh, to reject these highs and, and to come back down to these levels of 1.5, uh, 1.954 and 151825. So that's, that's a point, OK? That, that's negative averaging. Or, OK, or it's just averaging. OK, you know, you, your view hasn't changed. The market was down, it went up, probably will go down again. So you just put more into the same position. OK, the foot is going down a little bit. So... We're going to have to see what happens. I mean, again, if you look on the five-minute charts, you know, you get to see, you know, more of the spike, more of the data. So, again, if this is the five-minute candle, here's the volatility. Where's the market going to get to? It's going to go down to the 50%. Okay? That's what markets like to do. So, you like to get there to 38.2 or the 50%, okay, and then make his decision. So, it's still got another 25 ticks to go, or it's going to continue the overall trend and go up. Okay, so it's now going up. It's testing these levels again. So we have to understand: do we want to, you know, stay short again, or is the market going to go even higher? Okay, so I've sold again. I've sold some more of that because I don't think it's going to go up from that point. Okay, so we've now averaged into a, you know, a fairly bigger position. Now that's how you, you scale into positions and you make them higher. So again, so we're looking for the market again. It hasn't made a higher high yet. So it starts to come back down. It's going to test the 23.6, 38.2, and the 50%. Okay, absolutely great, Chris. Well, there we go. He's, he's took a bid on the initial news, and he's taking his beer money. So it just goes to show, we can all have different opinions and still make money in the market. So it's not about necessarily being right. It's about being right at the right kind of time. So we just need this uh, this, this kind of five-minute candle to reject the close above 152. 327, the market should come down. The FTSE is again going slightly down again. So, you know, conflicting things. We're not trading big size. We can, we can weather the storm for a bit. You know, again, the FTSE, uh, well, cable, uh, cable now is trying to just bounce through, you know, the, the, this high and make a higher high. But again, remember, the longer these things don't do these things and don't make higher highs and attempt to get to the higher points of resistance, then the more momentum is going to come the opposite direction. Okay, any other any other thoughts, guys? Any other thoughts coming through? You know, again, I mean, you can only go for the market's telling us. You know, the market's, the pound is certainly taking this as good news. But it isn't anything that we don't really know. So, again, market's trying again to make these highs. Again, it's probably going to, again, ooh, tested that double top. Okay, so it's going to be trying to squeeze them shorts out. So, Market's going to have to, if it tries it again, it will definitely make a higher high. But if it doesn't, this, this market's going to hit back to them lower fibs. It has to. Okay, so we're just, it's the bull bear kind of momentum now. We've got enough momentum in it to push that market higher and make a higher high and get the shorts out of the market. Like myself, I'll probably get out. Or is this market going to say, that's enough now? Okay, let's get back to, uh, back in the range. Let's close back inside the Bollinger Band. And let's get testing that 23.6, 38.2 and that key 50% level. Okay. So just we just need this. If this candle goes red, then for sure. But again, we've still got the bulls trying to test these highs. Okay, foot is kind of stabilised, peaking back up. So this is the difficult part of trading, isn't it, guys? And we can look in 15 minutes time and hours time. And of course, the market will be trading back down to 151954. But in the short term, when you've got a position, it's much more difficult to hold your hold your trade. So again, trying to hit them highs, but We've seen, you know, one five two three two seven coming in as a point of, you know, resistance. You know, the bob levels. 
So if he breaks through that and he does make higher height, then we could spike up to 152672 quite easily. And that will get all the shorts out of the market. How quick it will recover from that? No, we just don't know. So you make the decision now that if you want to take the spoils and hold your position, then you've got to be brave. You know, if, if you don't, then you're not going to be. Okay, so just a couple of ticks down now. Come on. Just need that market to drift back up a little couple of ticks. Still got them bulls buying dips. This is, you know, this is what's hard about trading, guys. This is what's really difficult to keep your view. Nothing's changed. Nothing news in the market. So why is, why is your cable spike? Okay, so it failed to make uh, a real significant higher high. Can this candle do it? It's trying to. Trying to make it. Okay, so we could see a big spike. Trying. So, okay, there we go. We've just split tyre. Don't find any buyers in here. It's going to turn. It's going to get smashed down. Need them buyers to force it up quickly. Take all them shorts out of the market. See, I was back in the day and I was a big trader. I'd be smashing short into that level, taking out all the long, taking out all the people with the profit. Remember, not that good of news. Okay, so here it goes. Pushing all them shorts out of the market now. Okay, has he got the, the, the has he got the strength to get up there? No chance. No chance. Selling some more. Not a chance. Sold some more. Okay, so we know the target was one five two six seven two on the technicals for to get above. It didn't get anywhere near. It didn't have any kind of real momentum and it had every opportunity to push stops out of the market there. So we need these uh, sellers to come back into the market, drive the market down below that high, drive it down below one five two three two seven. Get all them longs, get them all the profit being taken. Again, it's trying up. I wouldn't say it's a low risk sell here, you know, because this is the real peak of the market. Okay, so if it's going to bit blip up quickly, this is where it'll do it. But, you know, we start to close below 152327, and yeah, that's a low risk shot because you're coming back into the range. You know, we're twice outside the, um, you know, the, the, the Bollinger Bands. Okay, so we need to come back in the Bollinger Bands, get towards the moving average, which ties in with the 50%. It's just when it does that. It's just a, you know, it's a matter of time, these things, aren't they? A matter of fact. Trading would be easy, you know, if we didn't have to deal with the short-term volatility. Yeah, good risk reward, David. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, good risk reward. Okay, so again, just bouncing on these levels. Let's see how we react to these highs again. Again, we're only on the five-minute candle, so... You know, it doesn't really always give the best picture of what's really happening. Again, the hourly candle is purely green, so we haven't seen any retracement yet. Uh, we're still at the top of the hourlies. We'll have to see if these buyers are going to come in. You know, if it's a pound now, you know, where's all these dollar buyers? Where's all the people you know trading the dollar right now? So again, three green candles. So that'd be one uh, fifteen-minute green candle. No, I just, I just, it's not being aggressive enough at these top levels for me to kind of frighten me out of the markets too much. But, you know, you know, it's not like anything, guys, isn't it? The longer it stays like this, the more difficult it is to uh, to stay in. So, yeah, we're dipping back now. You know, is, is this the time to do a big aggressive trade? Hmm, possibly not. Okay, but let's see how we, let's see how we close. If we close in the five minutes below 152327, then the lower fibs are going to be tested for sure. This goes red. This will be nice because the first point it will test, I guarantee, is 152200. A nice round number, a nice fib level. We just need these greedy bulls to be out of the market to know there's no real great data there. There's no real surprise or shocks to the market. They continue. They continue to test higher. Okay, guys, so we're coming nearly towards the end of time. So has anyone got any comments or thoughts or anything you'd like to add to this? I'm going to stay short because if you look at the chart here, you know, it's, it's higher wick, higher wick, higher wick. You know, the bodies are not really telling us. If it wants to get a higher body, it'll get up here. But, you know, is it really going to extend on the back of that day to another 29, 30 ticks? I can't really see it. I can't see that happening before some profit taking. And once these candles go red, then people are going to be taking profits and taking the opposite short view down here. I've just been taking a short view here and averaged in all around here. So I'm right at the top of, of potentially where the top of the market could be in the short term. Okay, remember, this is a short term trade. 
Yeah, I mean, good. Aaron Deep, do we close above um, six uh, six zero zero? Well, we'll have to see. I mean, that is a good, strong level. Um, the the, the FTSE is still bullish for me. I think we're going to see a tail off eventually in the DAX and the stocks. So I'd still remain to be bullish. The, the foot here we go, gone red. So look for that to be tested, guys. Look for it to be tested. One five two two zero zero. Back in profit now. Okay, we need that to be a little bit stronger, don't we? We just need these lows to be taken out. We don't need we don't want that just to be the profit taking there. We don't want that. Okay, another candle is gonna open now. Come on, hit them lows. Hit the lows, that's what we want. Okay, we don't want to see this candle get back to that one five two three two seven level. Okay, so we need that to go we need that to go uh to go red really. We need the sellers just to push the rest of them lungs out of the market. People take a bit of uh, bit of profit taking. Again, look at them in the short term. Wick, small body. Wick, small body. Big body. It's telling us we're running out of momentum, isn't it? But it's just being able to hold on, guys, isn't it? Um, I mean, you can, you can use this for scalping. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just a short-term type of trading. You just don't stay in a position more than, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. But we're trading on the back of data. So once that time's gone, you know, the 15 minutes after the data, it's absorbed in the market. So it's, it's no longer needed. So we're just trading technically. Okay, so we're testing again them highs. I've already scaled out some profit. So I can scratch if we make a new high. Okay, they're just being prudent. So really, the trade is... We close, we'll make a higher high. We're at the trade. Don't think the market will get as high as 152672. Testing again at 152327. Market rejects that. The market gets back to 1522. And then definitely, I would say, round to the, the, the kind of lower FIB level. So we're looking for a final rejection of these highs up here. Expect the market to come down. So you're looking at a good 20 tick trade to get out somewhere around here. Okay, we really kind of aggressively go down 35, 40 ticks towards the 50%. So, that's good to see now, guys, won't we? That's my technical analysis. Take a screen print, okay? Press uh, press print screen, a screen print, put it into Word, put it into a paint document. Your key level here is 152327. The market rejects that and doesn't close significantly above it on the five-minute charts. It gets down to lower levels. It's as simple as that, okay? So, while everybody else is struggling to, to understand what to do, you know, we're still keeping that view that we're short below 152.37 in the short term. The market wants to make highs, let it make highs. Okay, we'll get out. We've already scaled out of our position, so we've taken a small amount of profit. Again, these are small trades. We went from one lot to two to four to eight. Uh, I've taken out 38 quid profit. We can always scratch the trade now. So, again, I'm only trading small because I'm going to start a new challenge, guys. I'm going to put £5,000 in the trader account, and I'm going to trade everything live. Okay, so that's putting my money where my mouth is. Okay, everything I trade now is my live account. I'm going to start an account with a five grand balance. So you can follow me in all my live trading events. And I want to take that five grand to 15 grand by the end, by the end of this, uh, by the end of this year. Okay, so market's going down again now. So we need to test that 38.2. Okay, I don't know how much time we've got left. Yeah, absolutely. I've been doing an FOMC webinar on FX Street. I've been asked uh, and invited to do that. So uh, sooner, sooner or later, guys, you're going to have too much. Steve Ruffley on FX Street, you're going to get, get sick of me. So we're still not aggressively going down yet. We need to force these, uh, these longs out of the market. So, again, we're just seeing that, you know, that these, all these kind of little doji patterns here, you know, real indecision in the market. So the longer this happens, the more the overall trend is likely to continue to make a higher high. We need the market to get aggressive and to smash out some longs and hit these 232 uh, 23.6 and 38.2 levels. The longer that doesn't happen, the more likely I are, are to make a higher high from this point. Okay, guys, yes, no problem at all. Well, listen, uh, really appreciate your comments. Follow me at Steve Ruffley on Twitter. Look out for all the next things I'll be doing on FX Street. Doing the monthly webinar on the 12th of August. Please look out for that, higher time frame trading. Anything you time, anything you see on with my name against it and anything on my page, like it, retweet it, share it. Help me out as much as you can, guys, because this is what keeps me coming back. All right, guys, thanks to, uh, to Vicky and the guys at FX Street. It's been a real pleasure. See you all very soon. Have a great afternoon.